Now to our main discussion for tonight. In the run-up to the August 2022 elections, President William Ruto gave a number of promises under his bottom-up economic plan. He unveiled a five-point manifesto dubbed the plan which he said will address Kenya's economic challenges. Now, as soon as he got into office, President William Ruto directed the National Treasury to cut the 2022-2023 budget by 300 billion shillings, which he believes will help the government save on a recurrent expenditure. Tax reforms have so far formed a larger part of Ruto's economic policies as he pushes for the expansion of the tax base. Now, Ruto's government has been keen on increasing revenue collection and cutting budget spending as a way of taming the appetite for loans. This forms the basis of our discussion tonight. Do you think Kenyans are paying more taxes in 2023? Talk to us at underscore ke and at Kennedy Kimani underscore on Twitter. The hashtag to use is Hope TV Newswatch. Now in studio, I'm not alone. I'm joined by Eric Mukono, who is an economist and also uh, a functional consultant at Great Tricks Africa. Karibu sana to the studio. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, before we get to a discussion, let me let me let our, our director, Mr. Davis, to play this clip of William Ruto today. Barabara zilikuwa makidogo kwa sababu pesa karibu mwaka moja na nusu hivi, barabara zijaendelea. Wakati tulifika, tukasema hatutaki kuendelea na msururu wa madeni. Tunataka kusimamisha mambo ya madeni. Tunataka kupanga uchumi wetu tofauti. Na ndiyo mmeona imechukua muda kidogo, tukipanga kwa sababu hatutaki kuweka uhuru wetu atarini kwa kukopa madeni tukawa ni watumwa wa wale wa metukopesha. Tunataka tupange vizuri, tuwe na rasilimali yetu, tukusanye kila ushuru ambayo eh, sheria inatukubalia na mimi nataka ni washukuru wa Kenya. Pale tulikuwa tunapata 70%, saa hii imekaribia 90%. Na hata ushuru wa mwezi huu umepita ile ilikuwa imepangiwa. Because Kenyans have decided to pay taxes because it is the surest way of financing our development and our progress. Na mimi nataka ni washukuru wa Kenya wote ile mimi nataka ni wahakikishie ni kwamba hakuna mtu atakwepa kulipa ushuru kwa sababu ni rafiki wa fulani ama ni ndugu wa fulani ama anajulikana na fulani kila mtu atalipia ushuru wa taifa letu la Kenya ndio tuweze kusomesha watoto wetu kujenga mabarabara kuweka maji kuweka stima kuweka matibabu sawa sawa ndio tuweze kwenda mbele kama Watu wa taifa la Kenya pamoja. Now those are the sentiments of President William Ruto. And in every function uh, this year and actually last year, since he got into office, he has been emphasizing on the need of Kenyans to pay taxes. And that's the big question for today. Do you think Kenyans have been overtaxed in this year? And uh, Eric, let me engage you in this conversation. And let's begin from that point. Do you think Kenyans have been overtaxed? Well, um, thank you, Kennedy, for having me here. Um, well, I do not think in any way uh, Kenyans are getting overtaxed. Uh, what uh, President Ruto's administration has done uh, since they go to office uh, is setting in um, measures to make sure they have curbed uh, tax evasion. So what you're seeing now is just, uh, actually things may get even more worse uh, in the coming days as a, the uh, CS for Treasury has said uh, uh, weeks ago. So I don't think uh, uh, that uh, Kenyans are paying more taxes, uh, only that President Ruto has made sure that the Treasury and the KRA uh, uh, have put in measures to cap tax evasion. Well, let's, let's look at the comparison between the Jubilee government the Uru Kenyatta's government and the Kenya Kwanza government. Mm -hmm. In the Uru government, we saw the government taking the the route of getting more loans, uh -huh. which made our country get into debts. Uh -huh. But we see William Ruto coming in the government and 
using a different formula, mm -hmm. is now asking each and every Kenyan to pay their taxes mm -hmm. so as to cut the appetite for loans and reduce the debt burden in our country. Mm -hmm. Which route do you think, according to you as an economist, mm. is the right way to go as a country? Do we continue with the Uru Kenyatta uh, way of getting more loans, mm. or do we pay taxes so as to evade and cut the appetite for loans, as the president says? Well, can, for some reason, uh, during the uh, last term of uh, uh, President Kenyatta, and the very last days of President Kenyatta, um, we, we had so many complaints of uh, every time he goes out of the country, uh, we have, he has to come back with something. Uh, sometime I saw some joke that uh, he has gone to Jamaica and he had to play some, uh, uh, some tricks to just uh, talk Jamaican so that he gets a, uh, 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 some money. Um, but Ruto has come in and one of the things that he made very clear uh, during uh, the address to parliament and Senate, the joint sitting between uh, parliament and uh, between uh, yes, the parliament and the Senate, was that we are not going to borrow as a country, we are not going to borrow to, um, to fund public uh, uh, recurrent expenditure, you know, uh, because that is not a route that as an economy and uh, as an economy that wants to grow, uh, that we should take. And so we have been borrowing to do projects, whereas uh, I believe and, and uh, uh, is, is, it, is Ruto's opinion that um, we can finance our own projects and development projects. Recently, he, he stopped the uh, Maima Hill Road, uh, that Mau was uh, Mau Summit Road, yeah, sorry, Mau Summit Road, uh, that was to wait into a lot of, uh, a lot of money, which is borrowed money. Uh, uh, research right now shows that for every 100 shillings uh, that Kenyans pay, uh, uh, that, that, that the carry get on revenue, uh, for every 100, 60 shillings go to uh, repayment of uh, uh, our borrowings and, uh, and our loans. That's 60%. That's 60%, a, a very huge figure, which, which I personally don't believe that's a way we should, uh, uh, we should go as a nation. And so one of the things he has been emphasizing on is that, and I'm sure where Ruto is right now, um, I want to just bet that uh, he has uh, the, the KRS Director General's Commissioner give him Boros a uh, phone number on speed dial so that he keeps reminding him every day that we have given you a target as KRA that you need to collect uh, by the end of this financial year, we need you to collect 3.3 trillion, you know? And you see, this is double the amount that KRA corrects, uh, that KRA corrects uh, uh, currently. And so they, they are on pressure, you know. And so going forward, we may get it a bit uh, rough, but it is only for a season. You yeah, know? Because I remember the <coughs> Treasury CS. Yes. In an event last week, he told Kenyans to brace themselves for tougher economic times ahead. Yes, yes, And you've yes. seen the Kenyan shilling depreciate to yes. 124. Yes, yes, yes. the US dollar. Yes. I mean... Let's, let's put this in a way the Kenyan, the common Mwanainchi can understand. Mm -hmm. you know, during the pre-election, we saw President William Ruto, the then deputy, running on the tag Hustler Nation. Mm -hmm. That this government is going to be created by the hustlers mm -hmm. uh, and that they are going to reduce the cost of unga, mm -hmm. you know, the basic commodities of life. Mm -hmm. Sure. But days, months after Ruto was sworn into office, mm -hmm. I mean, we've not seen greater change uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, from the previous regime. Uh -huh. The taxes uh -huh. are going high. Uh -huh. you know, fuel prices uh -huh. are increasing. Uh -huh. I mean, what's the future like? Well, um, I, I, one thing I love the deputy president regarding Gashagwa uh, for some reason. Um, he's the only true Kenyan in this nation who uh, he said for him in this administration it's about talking the truth. And you see, when he came in, one of the things he said is that kazi yangu ni kuongea ukweli na sisi tutambia wa Kenya ukweli. And one of the things he said that, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, when uh, during the last term of uh, President Kenyatta, in the very last days, uh, as is, we, we, we really do not know whether this was the truth, but uh, Ruto was not really part of this government. Uh, and so they didn't really know about the financial situation. And uh, Gashegwa told us that whatever they came and found uh, 
in there, they didn't think that the situation was that bad, you know. And, and to some extent, I, I, I kind of believe them, you know. And uh, what these guys were doing in the, in the previous regime, uh, you cannot subsidize, uh, you cannot uh, subsidize output, you know. You cannot subsidize uh, UNGA, because you also saw it was, not, uh, it was not something that lasted. I looked for that 100 shillings, no, I, I never found it. I am sure, I don't know whether you eat unga or you eat ugali, <laughs> but... Um, I'm a normal Kenyan uh, too. You, okay, okay. <laughs> it's my favorite meal. <laughs> okay. Um, but, but Truto comes in with, with another narrative of we want to subsidize uh, inputs, we want to subsidize production, you know, we want to fertilizer. subsidize the, the cost of fertilizer, you know, Be because that in the long run, will make the cost of uh, uh, input, the cost of Wunga come down, you know? And, and for, for, for President Kenyatta, this was only a, a campaign strategy uh, that we bring this down and then, you know, you're going to give us votes because, you know, we have brought the, uh, the, 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 the price of commodities down, which really didn't, uh, which really didn't uh, work. Um, and, and just to your question, um, why, why I brought in Gashagwa is because uh, the situation may not really change. You know, the price of commodities, th this will take a, building an economy takes, may take quite some time. So actually, let's say the narrative has mm -hmm. the nation mm -hmm. and in a hundred days, it was just political rhetoric. Uh, that was pure politics. Politics. That was pure politics. Because imagine after a hundred days, mm -hmm. I remember William Bruto saying that, you know, some things are hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. So give us another. In one year's time. Mm -hmm, true. So after one year elapses mm -hmm. and the situation is not the same, you know. I still can promise you we may not see much even after a year. This may take uh, close to three years, you know, before we stabilize back our economy, before we, we, we get our shilling back, uh, uh, the strength of our shilling uh, against the dollar uh, quite, quite strong. It may take quite some time, you know. Uh, recently, they brought in the conversation of um, the and, and, and you asked about uh, uh, tax, you know. Uh, and I told you about uh, Ruto is trying to close in the gaps to tax evasion. They brought in the narrative just last week, the narrative of they want to close the, they, they want to get into mobile money uh, Tra transactions. Mobile eh? money transactions. Um, which is, which is uh, quite interesting because. Um, if, if we really want development as a, as a country, you know, every time when we have politics, we have, um, we, have, uh, we, we have people crying that we want roads, we want water, we want electricity, we want infrastructure. And you see, for the government to fund all this inf infrastructure, you and I must pay taxes, yeah. you know? And uh, we must make sure that we tap into every avenue of revenue as a nation every avenue as a nation. And so, um, uh, part of the reason why the government wants to integrate the systems of the KRA to, uh, uh, to, tho to those of uh, M-Pesa, to those of uh, Kenya Power, and to those of uh, 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 landlords, is so that um, um, they are able to track, you know, your transactions. Because uh, you find guys here every other day, they are in Mombasa every weekend, you know, mm -hmm. uh, transacting. Soft life. Yes, yeah, soft life. It, it, it's a pure soft life. But you see, when it comes to filing taxes, they are filing nearly returns. Mm -hmm. You know? Allow me to interject you on that. Yes. And it's an issue that has made many Kenyans talk on social media. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe to bring it uh, to the light. And KRA said to, you know, track mobile money transactions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in tax cheats part. And... Uh, True. Kerry will be, will be tracking the 16% value added tax mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on sales as well as the 20% excess duty charge on transactions. Mm -hmm. And customers will also pay a 20% excess duty mm -hmm. on airtime. For the common monarch, because mm -hmm. you know, many have been saying, you know, we are going to be taxed our airtime, you know, our mm -hmm, <laughs> everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kindly explain to the common monarch what does this mean for them? Well, this is only a measure. Uh, Really, they are, they, are not uh, they are not coming into your, into your transactions to get money from you, you know. Part of what they are doing is to just make sure that when they look at your transactions 
and the taxes that you pay are similar, you know? They, they, are, they are kind of, they are matching, you know? Uh, that if you're making transactions of, uh, of, of over uh, 200,000 shillings uh, per month, when they look at your uh, 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 tax payment, they are able to track that in all these transactions, this person has been paying his taxes, you know? That is all they are trying to do when they try to say, we want to get into your mobile money, uh, to track your mobile money transactions. So, so really, it's, it's not um, uh, something that uh, really should worry people as long as you pay your taxes as you have always been paying. So really, it shouldn't be much of a worry unless uh, you are a tax evader, yeah. uh, Ruto is on your neck. <laughs> Yes, now, he's looking uh, for you. Talking about transactions, uh -huh. and uh, recently we saw the mobile to bank mm -hmm, your, mm -hmm. uh, transactions, the, mm -hmm. the, the levies were brought back. Mm -hmm. Do you think that many Kenyans will now opt for cash instead of mobile money transactions? Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. I've been to this you know, uh, market in Nairobi, mm -hmm. it's famous. You know, mm -hmm. And when you go shopping over there, mm -hmm. they don't accept M Pesa. Mm -hmm, true. You have to give cash, or if you are to to withdraw, they'll take it to an Mpesa shop. Mm -hmm. We withdraw the cash and pay mm -hmm. sure. on cash. Do you think Kenyans will evade this mobile to bank transactions? True. Um, we were having a conversation in one of our, uh, uh, my colleagues in the office today called Jean. Um, and yes, uh, she, she, has, she has kind of a business and, and I was trying to just drill down uh, to what will happen uh, just in case uh, KRA now wants to even track down yeah. uh, what she does. And she told me plainly and boldly that uh, I will not allow my customers to pay me through, uh, to pay me through uh, MPS. I'll, I'll have now to, if, if the government goes that way, we now uh, devise better ways of trying to evade some of these things. And so uh, in the coming days, we'll see uh, more cash transactions. Uh, but then, as well, we, may, we cannot evade M-Pesa, you know, we, we may not evade M-Pesa as much in, in those online and mobile transactions, yes. Yeah. We, we saw the IMF, International Monetary Fund, mm -hmm. raise concern on Kenya's debt, mm -hmm. which stood at 8.7 trillion mm -hmm. as of October last year. Mm -hmm. You think this is one of the reasons as to why President William Ruto is trying as much as possible to stop getting loans from outside, mm -hmm. you know, and go the tax, tax way? Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, our debt is at a very bad situation, Ken, let me tell you. Um, the recommended uh, ratio of uh, our debt to GDP uh, is, is 50%. You know, we are at 64, uh, should be 64.5% or thereabouts, which is a really bad figure, you know. We, we are up by more than 10%, you know, quite, 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 quite bad. And, 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 and this was a quite a nice move by President Ruto. Uh, recently, they, they, they moved the debt ceiling uh, and what has been happening, including in uh, President Kenyatta's regime, that when we hit the debt ceiling, uh, the debt ceiling is up to where an, an economy is allowed, to, is, is allowed to, to borrow. And so it was, it was uh, moved to 10 trillion, you know, so that it allows the government to, uh, continue, to continue borrowing, you know. Uh, which is because we, we cannot rely on debt. Uh, relying on loans and, and some of these things are not sustainable for an economy, as I, as I told you earlier. And uh, that is why President Tuto is constantly urging Kenyans on savings and paying of taxes, you know. Uh, I want to give you a story. Let me give you a story of uh, why, why President, Kenya, uh, President Ruto sorry, uh, is quite... Uh, is quite uh, motivated on, uh, on, uh, on, on tax payment. Uh, recently, last year, I, I got a job offer uh, with one of the, an international company. Uh, and part of the discussion, of course, as we are trying to negotiate on the salary, um, they told me, now, Eric, we are going to offer you this much, uh, but then, uh, for us, we do not deal with KRA. So we will pay you, but then you are going to deal with KRA on your, on your own. own. So you have to pay. So taxes. you have to pay your taxes, you know. And we have a number of people who are paid through M-Pesa, and, and 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 that was one of the means of 
of, of, of uh, uh, that is one of the means of tax evasion. And, and how many uh, companies do you think we have, such companies we have in Kenya, that are evading tax, you know, that are evading uh, pay, you know, and how much money as a country are we losing uh, in terms of uh, in, in tax evasion, you know? And some of those loopholes are the loopholes that this administration and Ruto, I, I can bet you that this week is not going to end again uh, without President Ruto talking about tax evasion again. I can tell you as well, next week, he's still also going to talk about taxes because that is the route that he has chosen to go. And I believe that is a route that as an economy, we should go because we cannot, it is not advisable uh, for a country to run on, to run on, uh, on loans. Well, it is you not see, sustainable. Allow me to uh, do a comparison. Okay. In the Jubilee government, we saw president, the then president, Uhuru mm -hmm. Kenyatta, mm -hmm. uh, justifying taking loans as a means of development, mm -hmm. saying that even the other, many other, the US nation, mm -hmm. they take loans, you know, they have lots of loans compared to us. Mm -hmm. But then you, when you see the development, mm -hmm. Kenyans were complaining, why is the development? Yes, you take a lot of loans, mm -hmm. but do we see the development? Now with the route to take, uh, uh, making us pay more taxes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you think you're going to see the development yet? Or is it going to be the same issue, but a different case scenario of taxes instead of loans? Uh, in President Ruto's administration, and, and, and especially in the first uh, five or three years, three or five years, we may not see as much development if he truly uh, is going the way of not uh, borrowing. We may not see as much development. In three Actually, to five years? Yes, in three to five years. So meaning the whole of his the, tenure? The whole of his tenure, we may see... First term, that Yes, year. yes, yes. We, we may see very, very, very little developments uh, if he indeed is not going to go the borrowing way. Um, President Kenyatta chose to go the borrowing route. You know, he chose to go the borrowing route. He built the expressway, he built the... Uh, he, 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 uh, he renovated the JKIA and, and so many things, you know. Um, but interestingly, President Kenyatta is gone and his administration is gone, you know. But we have, as Kenyans, we are going to suffer the consequences of the loans he took. Because as I told you, uh, one of the researches, uh, out of 100 shillings, uh, 60 shillings go to borrowing, to, 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 re, to the repayment of loans, you know? And that is why we constantly, uh, uh, we do not see development, but then we are still paying more taxes, you know? Because we have to finish up on these loans. Our port is at risk. When, when, when this government came, came in, um, the first thing that uh, C.S. Murkomen, uh, when he came to office, he, he said, I want to put... Uh, uh, the deal that was there about the expressway and the port, you know, we want to make it public, you know. And so, those are some of the things that as Kenyans we are dealing with out of what President Kenyatta's uh, government did in terms of borrowing, you know. But then we may get ourselves in, uh, in the next three years, things may not be uh, as we wish and as we want. Uh, Ruto is going to be on our neck Njogo uh, Nandongo is going to be on our neck. Uh, Gedimburo is not going to spare us. Uh, the KRA Commissioner uh, General, he's not going to spare us. So things may get worse, yes. So in short, Kenyans need to brace themselves for tough economic times. Right? Yes, yes, yes. When I, when, I, when I read the article, when you know it is one thing when, when another Kenyan tells you that we brace ourselves for a tough economic times, it is one thing when, uh, when you tell me that, and it is another thing when Jogon and Dongo, the CS Treasury, tells you brace yourself for a tough economic time ahead. So when it comes from the CS himself, he knows it is going to be tough indeed. Wow. Yes. What a way to end the conversation. <laughs> that has been Eric Omukono, an economist and a functional consultant at Great Tricks Africa. Kenyans expect tougher times ahead. Well... That has been a great conversation. Thank you so much for keeping tabs to eat. I'll be back after this short news break with the sports news. Don't go too far.